Old cars, they don't make them like they used to, which is why many of us fondly remember their simplicity and design. From pop-up headlights, thin A-pillars and manual gearboxes, all the way through to keys that actually look like keys instead of car testicles and full-size spare wheels, there's a lot we miss about cars with history. But the list doesn't end there because as we discovered in part 2 of things we miss most about old cars, there were a lot of things you added in the comments. These included not being binged and bonged at every 5 seconds, being a better driver because you actually need to pay attention behind the wheel in an old car, as well as the smell of old leather, simple manual soft tops, durability, and the purity of an untouched exhaust note. Recently, and after buying this very 1983 Porsche 944, it got me thinking about how much better old cars were for enthusiasts like us. So, here are even more reasons why we miss them. Hello. Functional vents. If you look at a vent or scoop on an old car, you know that they take their jobs very seriously. Air rushes in one way and is pushed out the other to aid cooling, provide oxygen to the engine or divert turbulent wind around, under or over. These days though, a lot of vents are big fat fakes whose job it is is to look functional while actually being completely useless. Unique styling. Back in the day, cars were designed to be distinctive and instantly recognisable. Take the BMW 3 Series as an example. You can spot those round headlights and boxy silhouettes a mile off, while these days many will struggle to tell the difference between a BMW and a Kia. My point is, car styling is so samey these days, with trends dictating size, shape, amount of fake vents or how big the grille should be. Okay, bad example. Engines with low power. The beauty of a lot of older cars is that they are, by today's standards at least, slow. That means that with many cars of a certain time period, you can drive it at 10 tenths without breaking the law. As an example, a typical 1.6 from the 1980s would have been proud of 100 horsepower. While these days, and thanks to turbocharging, you're looking at double that, maybe even more. Put your foot down in one of these then, and you're breaking the national speed limit in just over 6 seconds, while making your passengers wish they'd taken the bus. Turbo lag. And while we're on the subject of turbocharging, whatever happened to turbo lag, where you put your foot down, wait for a few seconds, and then get hit up the arse with a surge of power? Turbo lag is one of life's greatest pleasures, which is why it's such a shame that it's been engineered out because all the fun police tell us that what we really want is linear power delivery that makes a small engine feel like a big engine. Well, guess what? You're f***ing wrong. Being able to siphon fuel. The recent fuel crisis in the UK caused the whole country to implode into a cesspit of panic buying lunacy. This led to crazy queues, forecourts running dry within hours, and a lot of frustration, from me included. Yep, no prizes for guessing what I'm queuing for. Until I remembered one thing. My Porsche 944, a car I don't use on a daily basis, was made before anti-siphon technology was invented. Meaning that I was able to borrow fuel from it to top up the tank in my other car. Try the same siphoning trick in a modern car and you'll find a blocked valve, which is no bueno for extracting liquid gold. Smaller wheels with meaty sidewalls. Performance cars of yesteryear aren't only cool because they're old, but because the wheels and tyres they sit on are elegant, smaller than today's monstrosities, and also comfortable to drive on. Sure, they won't grip as hard as a modern tyre, but give me a 16-inch wheel with a meaty tyre over a 19-inch rim with low-profile rubber any day. No fake materials. When most of you were still swimming around in your dad's underwear, regular cars weren't fitted with swathes of plastic and fake carbon fibre. Metal, chrome, wood and leather adorned interiors, and for that reason, they were built to last. Take any modern car and drive it for 40 years, and I bet most of the interior trim will either have fallen off or turned into dust. No annoying safety legislation. Now before we get onto this point, I get it. Safety legislation is there to keep us safe and well. But my god, is it annoying. Take motorway driving, for example. In any modern car fitted with lane assist, the car pushes you back into your lane should you stray due to drowsiness, driver error, or distractions. On paper, that sounds great, but in reality, the system kicks in more than you'd ever need and when you want it least. And depending on car make and model, it can also be unnecessarily forceful with its actions. Old cars, though? Nope. You are your own lane assist, which keeps the task of driving completely unfiltered and a lot less frustrating. The feeling you get from an old car. Driving an old car is always an occasion no matter what speed you're doing. The noises, the vibrations, the aroma of oil and fuel and the feeling of being completely at one with a machine are just the best. 
By contrast, the majority of new cars leave you feeling cold, with numb electric steering, tons of sound deadening, and computers so complex, it's easy to switch off or get distracted behind the wheel. So that's it from me, with even more reasons why I, and I'm sure many of you guys, miss old cars. If you think I've forgotten anything, then let me know in the comments below, but for now, thanks for watching.